Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Childhood obesity is a serious problem in the U.S. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 14.7 million children and adolescents, roughly 20% of all kids ages 2 to 19, are obese, putting their health at risk. Joining us to talk about this is Dr. Anne McQuarrie. She's a pediatrician with the Scripps Clinic Medical Group in San Diego, California. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. So what is considered obese? Obesity is a diagnosis based on BMI or a patient's body mass index. And this is a relationship between their weight and height and gives us an estimate of the amount of body fat that they have in their body. Children grow a lot in height and weight throughout their childhood, so there's not a strict BMI cutoff that we use. Instead, we look at percentiles, which essentially are averages or expected BMIs for a child at a given age. So if a child is above the 95th percentile at their age, then they would have a diagnosis of obesity. This in general terms to think about could be if a child is 70 pounds, but we expect that they should be around 50 pounds, then they're likely obese. Why are almost 15 million children and adolescents so overweight, 20% of that population? Yeah, it is a staggering amount of the population that is suffering from obesity or overweight. And there are a lot of things that can contribute to this, but a big portion of it is recent societal changes. So things like decreased physical activity, increased access to unhealthy foods, and increased screen time. So who is most at risk? There are multiple things that can put a child at risk of suffering from obesity, things like genetics, children who have struggled with adversity or trauma, as well as children who grow up in families that have immigrated to the United States or families with lower incomes. So what is the cause of obesity? Because when you think of kids, you think of all this energy that they have, that they're running around like crazy. <laughs> they do seem to have a lot more energy and are much more active than we are. So things like what they're eating, unfortunately, sugar sweetened beverages have become a big part of a child's diet. And on average, 10 to 15% of a child's calorie intake in a day comes from sugary beverages. We also have larger portion sizes, increased access to fast food, families that are busier and they don't sit down to have meal times, possibly kids that are eating in front of TVs or screens, and just an increase in screen time in general. Children are often using screens more and more during the day, which can decrease their physical activity and even actually decrease their metabolism. And are there psychological reasons for this weight gain? Absolutely. So adverse childhood events like bullying at school, parents getting divorced, or other major traumas or stressors in a child's life can contribute to have having increased risk for obesity, as well as mental health issues alone, such as anxiety or depression, can also contribute to increased appetite and obesity. And what health conditions are related to childhood obesity? Children can struggle with both mental health effects as well as physical effects like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, breathing problems like sleep apnea, or having a more difficult time getting over respiratory illnesses as well as joint and back problems. So as a parent, what can you do to help keep your child from becoming obese? It's really important to remember that you as parents are their main role model. So being a good role model by making healthy choices yourself with your eating, your screen time, and your physical activity are very important aspects. Also creating a home where healthy habits are encouraged, making maybe some healthy, fun interventions in your family, like going on a family walk regularly or doing a neighborhood scavenger hunt, cooking together, things that really incorporate healthy habits that can be maintained long-term are really important. And what kind of foods should the kids be eating and not eating? So having all of the main food groups, like the fruits and vegetables, proteins, healthy whole grain carbs, and dairy are all important. If you have a picky eater who doesn't like some of those food groups, I often really try to encourage you to keep exposing them and introducing them to new foods, because over time, they're much more likely to eat foods that they see regularly. Avoiding too much snacking, especially with processed foods like chips, crackers, cookies, and again, those sugary beverages, as all these foods offer a lot of calories without much nutritional benefit. And what about fast food? 
Yeah, fast food definitely has increased calories and eating eating at home will usually have much more well-rounded and healthier foods. Does this problem with obesity get worse as they get older? Yes, absolutely. So as children age, they often spend more time in front of screens and have more control over what they're eating on a day-to-day -day basis and tend to make unhealthy choices. Studies have actually shown that many adolescents who struggle with obesity established these habits and this um, obesity before the age of five even. So that's important to note because behaviors and patterns that children learn early on tend to be what they adopt into their lifestyle as they get older. So you want to limit the screen time, right? The time on the computer, the time on the laptop, the time watching movies, the time on the cell phone. Absolutely. Yeah. If we can limit the screen time and instead of watching a movie or a TV show, get outside, go to the park, go to, go on a walk around the neighborhood and do something active that can definitely improve the health of a child. So what advice would you give to kids and teens? Yeah, so one of the things I always like to talk about is what we call the 5210 rule. And so that's getting at least five servings of fruits and vegetables in a day, spending less than two hours in front of screens during a day, spending at least one hour or 60 minutes of activity that's getting your heart rate up and you're, you know, you're sweating, and then zero sugar sweetened beverages in a day. The other important thing that I really like to mention is setting yourself personal goals that you feel you can actually accomplish and maintain long term. If you set too large of a goal for yourself, it can be really hard to maintain it long term. So setting small incremental goals to make stepwise kind of changes to your habits. Let's go into a little bit more depth. How much exercise and what kind of exercise should these kids and teens be getting every day? Yeah, so it's, a, it's recommended that children and teens get at least 60 minutes of activity every day. At least three of these per week should be high intensity, meaning that they are getting sweaty, they're having their heart rate increase, and they're really trying to get their muscles engaged. The rest of the days, it's okay if it's a little bit less intense, but it should still be 60 minutes of activity that could include walking around. If obesity is left untreated, what can happen? Most of the time, obesity will persist or continue into adulthood if we don't do anything about it in children, and it can cause more physical effects like heart disease, breathing issues, musculoskeletal issues, and much more. It's hard to make substantial changes in weight when you're an adult, and so creating healthy habits in children is really the best way to fight obesity. Any final thoughts, doctor? Yeah, obesity is one of the most common chronic pediatric diseases, and rates of obesity are continuing to rise. We know that it has a negative effect on the mental and physical health of people over time, and so it's really important to make sure that we're talking about and addressing childhood obesity and involving the entire family in healthy lifestyle changes. Parents and children both should be really encouraged to bring up any questions or concerns they have about weight or nutrition with their doctor. And not feel ashamed about it. Definitely not feel ashamed. There is a stigma to it, but we want to help. And the only way to really help is to start the discussion. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. And thank you for having me to discuss this important topic. Sure. If you want more information on childhood obesity, just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. At Scripps, we're here for good. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.